Hello, viewers. We welcome you once again to the weekly Interschool Science Quiz Quest. As you already know, this has been brought to you by Doordarshan Kendra Kolkata and the National Council of Science Museums. Today, conducting various experiments and asking you very interesting questions and telling you how things work is the director of the National Council Science Museums headquarters, Dr. Jayanto Stanapati. Let's give him a very big hand as he walks in. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello. Before going any further, let's introduce the teams to you. On my right is the J.C. Bose team. Please introduce yourselves. You are? I am Indonil Banerjee from St. Francis High School. I am Abhrajit Raha from the same school. I am Shudip Chengupto from the same school. The same school, uh, is that the name of a school or? No, it's at St. Lawrence High School. That's St. Lawrence High School, right. Okay, and on my left is C.V. Raman team and you are? Hi, I'm Dipro Bhattacharya from Ramakrishna Mission Residential College, Narendrapur. Hi, I'm Shubha Banerjee from Ramakrishna Mission Residential College, Narendrapur. Yes? Hi, my name is Shivarjun Ghosh, I'm from Narendrapur School. Okay. The rules of today's competition, which is more aimed at imparting education rather than being that competitive are very simple. We've got the first four questions, which are direct questions. 20 points if you get it on your direct and 10 on passes. 15 seconds to answer the question, after which it will pass to the next team. In case the other team does not answer, these questions will go over into the audience. The last two questions will be on the buzzer. Plus 20 if you get it right, minus 5 if you do not get it right. And these also go to the audience. So let's not waste any further time and put you straight through to the first question. And now for the first question, which goes to the JC Bose team, Dr. Sanaboti is going to do the balancing act. I have a common balance here, the type of balance which you see in vegetable market. I'm placing a 500 gram weight on the left hand side pan and another 500 gram weight on the right hand side pan. If I lift the balance, you find this is in equilibrium. That means this moment is, is moments of balance. moment about the midpoint is balanced. Okay, moment Top. about the midpoint is balanced. Now I'm showing you another balance in which I am keeping 500 gram weight on the left hand side pan, but 450 gram weights on the right hand pan. This is also balanced. This is in equilibrium. Then what is wrong in the second balance? That is the question. In case of uh, this, we find the, the system is in rotational equilibrium. Okay. So when we are calculating rotational equilibrium, what we do is multiply the force acting with the perpendicular distance about the point of rotation. So in this case, as we find that uh, two different forces, in, if we consider the gravitational acceleration, are acting on the system, but still it's balanced, you can only conclude that arms are of different length. And the okay. ratio, ratio is inverse to the weights that is taken. Yeah. Weights taken in different So the arms are of different, different length. length. That yeah, is so absolutely right. <laughs> Good answer there, JC Bose team. Dr. Sanapoti, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I want to explain it in simple sentences. You see, in a balance, which is first kind of liver, the fulcrum is somewhere between the two ends. In a good balance, the distance from the fulcrum to one end are same. And in that case, you can balance 500 gram with 500 gram. In the second balance, the fulcrum is not at the center. The lengths are dissimilar. So where you have less weight, the length of the arm will be more. And you know the formula that if L1 into W1 is equal to L2 into W2, the balance will show you equilibrium, irrespective of the weights which are placed on both the sides. Whether they are equal or not, that hardly matters. Well, then that was a good answer there, JC Bose team. 
Abhijit, we are sure that you are one person who is never going to get cheated by any shopkeeper. Good answer there. 20 points to you and we move on to the next question. Before we go to the next question, the score. JC Bose team has got 20 points and here's your opportunity to open your account. CV Raman team, this is for you. I have a pressure cooker here, which is normal pressure cooker, which we use at home. I'm pouring some liquid in it and covering the lead of the pressure cooker and putting the pressure control on it. whistles. The question is, where from this pressure cooker is getting hit and how the pressure is created inside the pressure cooker? Uh, the pressure cooker is actually not getting hit. Okay. Due to application of pressure, mm -hmm. the boiling point uh, automatically rises, okay. boiling point rises, boiling point of the substance inside. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually uh, it boils at a much higher temperature and I think you are not getting me. What I am asking, you see in a normal pressure cooker you have to have a burner What's to heat the pressure cooker and inside that you put something say liquid and that generates heat inside and creates pressure. In this case, I have not applied any burner here. I have poured some liquid which is creating pressure and where from the pressure cooker is getting hit. That is my question. I think the temperature of the liquid is far below the temperature of the pressure cooker Okay. and as it, uh, it collects the latent heat from the pressure cooker itself right. and it vaporizes, thus its volume increases and thus the pressure increases. and. That's why it whistles. Okay, that's the right answer. Very good. Well done. Good answer. You also pick up 20 points. Right. Dr. Sanapati. Let me explain you. The liquid which I have poured in the pressure cooker is liquid nitrogen. And liquid nitrogen is a very, very low temperature liquid. So, when I am pouring liquid nitrogen in the pressure cooker and closing it, because the pressure cooker is at room temperature which is much higher than the temperature of the liquid nitrogen that creates expansion of the liquid nitrogen. So, liquid nitrogen transforms into nitrogen gas with enormous pressure and through the nozzle the because of the pressure it releases through the nozzle and that is why it makes whistle like a normal pressure cooker. Well, 20 points apiece then and the next question goes to the JC Bose team. Welcome back viewers, you are watching Quest. Quest as you know is an inter-school science quiz. At this stage of the contest, both teams are tied at 20 points each. And the next question will take you back to your childhood days when you used to play with little toys. Next question for JC Bose team. I have placed two plane mirrors side by side and the angle between the mirrors can be changed because they are hinged. The angle can be changed between 180 degree as it is now to 90 degrees. I am placing an object in front of the mirrors. When the angle between the mirrors is 180 degree, you can see one image. Okay. Now, if I reduce the angle between the mirrors to 120 degrees, I can see two images. If I reduce the angle further and make it 90 degrees, 
then we get three images. what is the mathematical relation between the number of images and the angle between the mirrors? If uh, n is the number of images form and theta is the angle between them, okay. then n equal to 360 by theta, 360 degree by theta minus 1. That is right, absolutely right. <laughs> Wonderful answer J.C. Boasting. Well done. Dr. Sanapati. Yes. When the mirrors are at 180 degrees, so 360 by 180 is 2 minus 1 is 1 and in the same way we get multiple images when we reduce the angle between the mirrors. Well that explains why you saw 1, 2 and 3 images. Next question is for the C V Raman team. <laughs> Scores at this stage, 40 points to the JC Bose team and 20 to the CV Raman team. Tell me CV Raman team, I understand you are all from the same school. Yes? Yeah. Why are you wearing different colored uniforms or is this your uni uniform? No, no, that's not our uniform. Little louder please. No, that's not our uniform. It's not? No, we just came to know it lately. Sir. Okay, so it's a holiday. <laughs> all right. So the next question is for you. Here we go. I have potassium permanganate in my left hand and color of the solution is violet. I am acidifying this solution by adding sulfuric acid and adding oxalic acid to it. The color vanishes. This is an oxidation reduction experiment. Okay? You have to tell me potassium permanganate has been reduced to what compound? Manganese sulfate. Manganese Absolutely sulfur. right. Manganese sulfur. Manganese sulfur. Can you tell me what are the other products? Yeah, it is K2SO4, carbon dioxide and water. What happened to uh, oxalic, oxalic acid? acid is oxidized to carbon dioxide. That is right. Absolutely right. I have nothing to do. Nothing further to add to that. That was a brilliant answer. 20 points to you. And now the next question. You're watching Quest, the Interschool Science Quiz. Before we ask the next question, which is on the buzzer, the scores. JC Bose team has got 40 points and C V Raman team also 40. Well, one could call it deuce. The next question on the buzzer, teams please do remember, if you hit the buzzer and you get the answer right, it is plus 20, you get it wrong, it is minus 5. And the same question will then move on into the audience, it will not pass to the other team sitting here. Next question, Dr. Sanapati. I have two electric boards here. Each of them are having two bulbs glowing. On my left, the board has two bulbs. And if I remove one of the bulbs, the other bulb goes off. Okay? But this does not happen when I remove a bulb the JC from the other team board. Hit the buzzer first. Okay. Your Second answer, series. because you have not been asked a question, you must be ready with an answer here. In first case, uh, when series. we are removing one series. bulb, then the circuit is cut off, uh, because it is in series connection. Okay. The bulb is in series connection, so the circuit is cut, cut off, so the current does not flow to the second bulb. The second case, because it is a parallel, I mean there is branching, if you cut off one branch, current still flows to the other branch, so the other, other bulb still glows. I have nothing more to add to your answer, that is absolutely right. Question. Well done JC Bose team. So from Deuce you move on to advantage JC Bose. That is 20 points, 60 to JC Bose. Next question on the buzzer.
Welcome back. Scores at this stage. 60 points to JC Bose team and 40 to the CV Raman team. For the next question, we'll be needing a volunteer. Any volunteers in the audience? Oh, plenty of them. Um, why don't you come up here? What's your name? Anurag. And have you been part of any scientific experiment before this? No. Never? This is the first time? Yeah. Okay. Let's find out what happens to you here. Anurag, you have to follow me. Okay. Whatever I do, you have to do that. I'm sitting on this block. You have to sit like this. And you have to stand up. Is that very easy? It seems so. Seems so. But I will not allow you to lean forward while standing up like this. Okay. And I would not also and I would also not allow you to bring your legs inside and stand up like this. Okay? You have to sit like this, hold your hands and stand up. Ready? Right. Um, they have already pressed the buzzer. So would you like to continue with this? Uh, or would, let's, let's get an answer from them first, I think. That's in all fairness. OK. Yes, you have an answer. It's very difficult to get up when yes. he's sitting and uh, he's not leaning forward. Because in the first case, uh, uh, when he's not leaning forward, the CG does not shift. The CG is acting along the same direction as the reaction force acts. Now, when he's bending forward, the CG is acting downward, the reaction mm -hmm. force acts in another direction. So he gets a force to uh, stand up. Secondly, uh, if you uh, consider Newton's third law, okay. uh, 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 when you consider Newton's third law, uh, the action reaction cannot act in the same system, but here is the same system. So uh, if he uh, applies the force on the block itself and tries to stand up, he cannot do that. The boy and the block consist of a single system. Well. I'm sorry, that's not the right answer. That was a very interesting answer there, Abhijit, but I'm afraid not the right one. OK, and let us see whether he can stand up or not. Right. <coughs> Hold your hands. And you have to stand up without leaning forward. No, no, no. You cannot pull the legs inside. Oh. You cannot lean forward. Sorry, sir. Can you? No, no you can't. OK. Now, let me explain you. Uh, just a moment, Doc. OK. I think this question should go into the audience. Right. Any right. answers from the audience? You want to answer? Yes. Please come up. Please come up here. Your name? Devajit Chatterjee. Yes, Devajit. Sir, Hold the mic close to you. When he is sitting here. Yeah. Face the camera. When he is sitting here, the CG is behind the position of his legs. And so the man, so the person is in unstable equilibrium. So he's. Um, Tendency is to fall backward, but when he put, pushes his leg behind, so he can stand forward. Okay, it's right, but not absolutely right. Do we have any more volunteers with an answer? Yes. Okay. I think you've already answered before. You have not answered before. Yes. Why don't you come up? Give him the mic. You are. Face the camera. I am Shomnath Te. Yeah. Face the camera. Yeah. Sir, when the boy was sitting, Anurag was sitting here. Right. The CG was passing through his navel. Okay. When he uh, when he stand up, the um, uh, when we was sit, but if he wants to stand up, then the CG must uh, the pass through the navel and through the foot. Okay. Um, uh, the foot, the navel should be in straight line. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if he don't lean forward, then he will not get that uh, uh, his navel and his foot will be not in. Well, you are approaching towards the right answer, but it's not the correct answer. Do you want any more from the uh, audience or doctor? I think I can explain what is uh, happening here. Anurag, I'm sure by now you become a naval officer. You can go back to your. <laughs> yes, doctor. Okay. It's all right. He, he'll answer. When I'm sitting here, my CG is passing through the block. Okay? I am stable. Now, if you remove the block, definitely I am going to fall. I will become unstable. To stand up, I have to stand on my feet. I will be stable, 
if my CG, the CG of my body and the base are in one vertical line, one vertical line that is very important. So, if I have to stand, I have to bring the CG of my body in line vertically with the base which is my feet. So, I can lean forward and stand up. This is one way. The other way is when I am sitting here, I can pull my legs inside, bring the base vertically in line with the CG and then I can stand up. This is the other way by which I can stand up. That is the correct answer. Well, that was explained very well, Dr. Sanapati. And that also brings us to the end of today's quiz. The final score tally today, JC Bose team have really lost nothing by hitting that buzzer. They are on 55. And the CV Raman team finished with a total score of 40 points. Thank you everybody for joining us. We will see you again with the same quiz next week at the same time. Goodbye and see you again. Mm -hmm.